Hi again, everybody. In this video, we're going to try to find all the subgroups of A4. So you remember that A4 is the alternating group on the set containing the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the alternating group just consisted of the even permutations. So let's start by writing down all the elements in A4. So the identity, of course, is an even permutation. We don't get any of the transpositions. Those are all themselves odd permutations. But we can get products of transpositions. So for instance, we could get 1, 2 with 3, 4, or 1, 3 with 2, 4, or 1, 4 with 2, 3. We also know that 3 cycles, right? because 3 is odd, we know it's an even permutation, we get all the possible 3 cycles. So we get 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 4, and 2, 3, 4. And then we get all the inverses of these elements. So I can take 1, 2, 3 and reverse the order. 1, 3, 2. 1, 2, 4, I get 1, 4, 2. 1, 3, 4 becomes 1, 4, 3. And 2, 3, 4 becomes 2, 4, 3. All right, in total I now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 elements. And since we knew that the order of A4 was equal to half the order of S4, which is a half 4 factorial, which is a half 24, which is 12, I know I have all the elements of A4. Of course, the question wasn't to find all the elements, but all the subgroups. So let's look at our subgroups. So first, we have the identity. Right? We can always get the identity subgroup. Now, let me try putting in one of these, uh, we call these double transpositions, there are two transpositions in a row. So I have the identity, and let me put in a double transposition. So if I put one of them in, because it's a product of disjoint cycles, and I, raise, I can raise both of them to the second power, and I know they commute, then I know this actually has order 2, meaning if I square it, I get the identity. So in fact, this is a subgroup. Similarly, if I use any of the other double transpositions, I'll get a subgroup. Okay. What if I try to put two of these double transpositions together? So if I put in, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, and also 1, 3, 2, 4. Well, let's do a little scratch work. If I multiply those, because I know I have to be closed under products, let's see what we get. So let's we'll start with 1. Uh, 1 is fixed by 2, 4, but then 1 goes to 3, then 3 goes to 4. So in total, 1 went to 4. Then where does 4 go? 4 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 1. Okay, so in total, 1 and 4 swap. How about 2? 2 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3. So in total, 2 has to go to 3, and now there's nowhere left for 3 to go to but 2. So by putting in two of the double transpositions, I automatically get the third. And in fact, you can check that if you multiply any two of these, you'll get the third one. So in fact, this is closed under products, and so we get another subgroup. All right. Now, what if I add in an extra 3-cycle? So instead of putting in another double transposition, I'll put in a 3-cycle. So uh, let's just do it systematically. We'll put in 1, 2, 3. So we need a little scratch work. Uh, well, first, we know 1, 2, 3 is automatically going to give you 1, 3, 2. That's the inverse. Uh, but let's multiply 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1, 2, 3. So let's see, 1 goes to 2, and then 2 goes back to 1. So 1 doesn't go anywhere. How about 2? Uh, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4. So 2 goes to 4. And where does 4 go? 4 goes to 3. And now 3 has to go back to 2, because 1 is fixed. So now I've gotten 2, 4, 3. OK, of course, I also have to get its inverse, which was 2, 3, 4. 
All right. But once I have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, we saw that that gave me two, four, three. But now I'm also going to have to do one, two, three, four with one, three, two. And I'm also going to have to do one, two, three, four with two, four, three. And I'm also going to have to do one, two, three, four with two, three, four. And each one of those is going to have to give me a different element. So automatically, I knew I, I know I'm going to get three more elements. And those three more elements are actually going to give me even more elements. So you can work out these details, but it's going to turn out this is going to equal all of A4. So in fact, what happens when you put in a double transposition and a three cycle, that's enough to give you all of A4. OK, so we don't want to mix them, because that'll give us everything. All right. Uh, what then can I do left? Well, I haven't looked at what I could do if I don't put in a double transposition. So if I put in a three cycle, say one, two, three, of course I have to get its inverse. And in fact, that's going to give me a subgroup. And I can do that for all of these three cycles. All right, so I can do one, two, three, of course I'll need its inverse. Do it for one, two, four, and one, four, two, one, three, four, one, four, three. 2, 3, 4, and 2, 4, 3. So we just called uh, first one h7. So And of course, we're always including the identity. But I'll call this one h8, that one h9, and this one h10. Fine. Well, what if I want to mix some of the three cycles? What if I put in two of them? So let's try doing an h11. So this is where I'll have the identity. I'll put in 1, 2, 3, which immediately gives me 1, 3, 2. Also put in, say, 1, 2, 4, which immediately gives me 1, 4, 2. All right. Well, again, we'll have to do a little bit of scratch here. What happens if I multiply 1, 2, 3 and the 1, 2, 4? So let's see. 1 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 3. So 1 goes to 3. And where does 3 go? 3 well, is fixed in the rightmost, but then 3 goes back to 1. So I get this transposition. Um, all right, what about 2? Two? 2 goes to 4, and then 4 is fixed. So 2 goes to 4, and now there's nowhere left for 4 to go to but 2. So in fact, by putting in two 3 cycles, I also get a double transposition. And we saw before that whenever you take a 3 cycle and a double transposition, you're going to get all of A4. So in fact, this H11 will just give me my, my H6. 